just when I thought I was out, they pull me back in. That was the most recent victory of the year for the Houston Astros as they took down the Seattle Mariners in a game that got downright testy. 8-3 to give them a one and a half game lead over Seattle for that final wild card spot and to technically keep them alive in the race to win the American League West. The Rangers did beat the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim last night. What's going on, people? It is the Paul Gallant Show on this Thursday, September 28th of 2023. I think we all, in the first inning of last night's game, thought that this was it. This was going to be it. Framber Valdez is on the mound. He can't throw a strike. He needs a mound visit. 11 pitches in. He's walking dudes. He gave up a home run. And somehow they got out of that first inning. And from there, they hung around just long enough for the offense to get going in the fourth. First, it was Jordan Alvarez. Jose Abreu gets a hit. Michael Brantley on a four-hit night gets another. Mauricio Dubon, doobie do it, hits a home run in the fourth. Big uppercut against the Mariners, who struck back. They get two more in the fourth. Framber Valdez is done. Yet again, an Astros starter who isn't able to pull his weight. But finally, we saw the full destructive power of the Astros' best bullpen arms in rapid succession over five innings. And I hope that we see this order, I guess, of arms in the postseason. First, Kendall Graveman comes in. It's not a clean inning, again, but he got the job done. Just one hit allowed. He got a strikeout. Hector Neris strikes out the side. We'll talk more about him in just a bit, but him getting in Julio Rodriguez's face after striking him out was definitely my favorite moment of the Astros season thus far. That could potentially get me canceled. I don't 100% know what was said. What I do know is that I love pumped up Hector Neris. Extended work for Brian Abreu. Gotta say, was a little nervous about that. I think all the Dusty Baker haters were also thinking the same thing. When you're asking a relief pitcher to do more than he's typically asked to do, go for more than one inning, go for two innings, one and two-thirds innings, things can get dicey. And things did get dicey in Abreu's last inning of work. But he gets through four strikeouts along the way. Ryan Presley extended work. He gets it done. It wasn't perfect, but that was a damn good showing by the Astros' bullpen. And along the way, in the seventh inning, the Astros get three more. Bregman gets a single. Alvarez gets an intentional walk. Kyle Tucker doubles. Brian, uh, Ro- excuse me, Jose Abreu gets a single. Michael Brantley singles. Three more. Martin Maldonado gets a home run. And again, it's the victory of the year. The most recent one, because we've probably said this three, four times this year, Sean. I don't know if you've been keeping track. I have a bit of a. Uh, I should have. I should. No, it's not reptile just you. brain. It's not just you that that calls every big Astros win the biggest win of the year. But this is the biggest. This win This is of definitely the, year. the biggest win of the year. This I mean, is. if they lost this game, you don't really have much control over your fate. You are you were hoping that Texas still has something to play for, and completely smokes the Mariners. Now, it it doesn't have to go one way. Anything can happen in that series, assuming you take care of business against an Arizona Diamondbacks team over the weekend on the road where you, you play better for some reason that has a pulse, but I don't think is like the 80 win teams in the American League. I think they are National League 80 wins, which means that they're not as good as the American League teams. Yeah, we had uh, to speak to how, I guess, in the driver's seat the Astros are, just how much they can, I don't want to say breathe easy because they breathe easy. You can't breathe easy. Okay. but If they breathe easy again, someone needs to punch them so that they are gasping for air. If you're a Houston Astro listening to this radio station, turn off your radio for the next 30 (laughs) seconds. Everyone else, still listen. If you're a fan, still listen. Okay, everyone's from, got the earmuffs on. Hit us, Sean. From at Austin Corey, there are 20 different ways the Astros, Arizona, and Seattle, uh, Texas series can go. 
15 of them are good for Houston. Two division wins, and then 13, they're in the wild card. Okay. So there's only five disaster scenarios. 5% chance at winning the division. That's fun. We'll see. But yes, focus on just getting in. Take care of business. How about a nice little sweep to wrap things up? You got the day off. You got a weekend ahead of you. You had the day off last time after beating uh, Baltimore in that last game of the series. Felt like that was going to give you a little bit of momentum. And then you pooped your pants against the Royals at home. Yes, if you're in Houston Astro, you can listen back now. 100%. Now, I don't know if they would know to tune back in because we told them to stop listening. Well, maybe they're in the car with like someone else and they just did earmuffs or something. I'll be honest, Sean. Telling them to change the channel when one of those Astros players... I don't know, like Kyle Tucker, who's underpaid, might be wearing a PPM meter, you know, t- to get paid twenty dollars a month. I-, I feel like that that wasn't a great idea because we we do like our ratings. We do like our number one in sports radio from ten to noon ratings over the last six months. We do like them. Yes, and it's all because of Kyle Tucker. Listen, what if it was Dusty needs- Baker the whole time? Dusty Baker follows me on Twitter. I mean, it's possible. It, it, it's it's not impossible. <laughs> I, I do think that everyone's I'm like, it's I not impossible that, that Dusty Baker is trying to upset him. You know what? He, he's got to come on happy. the show. He's got to come on the show if he does, because I'm the biggest Dusty Baker defender. But Hector Neris is the guy who saved the season. He might be canceled now. There's a lot of argument over what he actually said to Julio Rodriguez. I'll admit, I've only taken Spanish on Duolingo, and I'm also not from a Latin American country. What I can tell you is that the Spanish language does vary in terms of interpretation and slang from country to country. And that Julio Rodriguez, Hector Neris, and Fran Valdez, they're all from the Dominican Republic. They all share the same agent. They are all supposedly friends. Supposedly, what Hector Neris said was this. Batea, 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 go no va de ahi. Did I get the pronunciation right? I don't know. But per some, that means go ahead and hit it, hit it, hit it, mother bleeper, get out of here. Per others, like Mariner's third baseman, Eugenio Suarez is a homophobic slur. I don't know. I truly don't know. I don't want to debate what is and what isn't. I I don't get mad about the Mexican goal kick chant that they've been doing for years. Maybe it is embarrassing for some Mexican soccer players. I know that that word can be a homophobic slur. I also know that that word can mean bitch. It really does vary. So... I'm not going to get into whether or not we should cancel Hector Neris, but I'm sure there are some people who are wanting me to talk about that. I'm sure there are some people who have strong feelings either side about it. All I know is seeing Hector Neris do something again that pumped up the rest of his teammates shows just how valuable he's been this year. And going into that outing, the guy had thrown... Over the 15 innings before, he'd been throwing with a .6 ERA. He has been on his A game of late. He had the big strikeout against the Baltimore Orioles where you saw him get crazy. You saw that too. And baseball can be a slow, plodding, dull game where there's so many guys who show no emotion. So when you actually do see a guy who shows that kind of emotion, how do you not get pumped up? And right after Hector Neris did that, The Astros rallied for three insurance runs in the seventh. Right after that happened. Cause and effect, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to say this is like an MVP baseball 2005, the greatest baseball video game of all time, where if you argued a call and got ejected as a manager, depending on how hard you tapped the the Y button, if you had an Xbox or the triangle button, if you, you had a PlayStation, you theoretically could pump up your players. And if you charged the mound, it was the same thing. Like they would get a statistical boost if you did it at the exact right time. And it felt like the Astros got a boost from Hector Neris doing that. It also felt like the Mariners caved. One of my friends who is a Seattle Mariners fan, who has been slowly thinking, like me, that the Run DMC 
outfits going into New York were a mistake. He thinks that the Mariners are fake tough guys. And it's interesting because both sides, of course, both fan bases are going to interpret it in a way that's slanted towards their teams. I think most Mariners fans are like, Hector Neira should be ejected and suspended for what he did right there. Most Astros fans are like, that was awesome. But this Seattle Mariners fan friend of mine thinks that the Mariners coming out but not actually doing anything about it, kind of being in hold me back mode, and Neris going to the dugout, you can make the same argument if you're if you're on the Mariners side of things. But he thought it was a it made him look like bitches. Uh, I I Soft. I I side with the Mariner the your unnamed Mariner friend friend who's uh, been given given anonymity for their yes. own safety. Uh, there's screenshots of like when Julio Rodriguez first turned around to look at Neris and then when he actually took his first step towards Neris and it was when Neris was already like halfway to the dugout. It was a little Joe Kelly-ish uh, where it's like, oh yeah, he eventually stepped to him, but he waited until four people were in, in, in between him. Here's my question though, especially with these two as friends, who hasn't gotten in some sort of shouting match as a guy with one of your guy friends and then gotten over it like five minutes mm-hmm. later? I, this has happened to me before. Um, Call him a couple slurs, you know. Well, uh, well, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm not joking. <laughs> back, you know, back when it was cool to, to say those things, who, who who's going to say they haven't done something like that? I, I, I'd love to say that we're all like, uh, we're all morally pious, but I'm just going to be honest. Like, I've done that before. Um, in that situation, what are you supposed to do? If you're Hector Nearest, are you supposed to stay there? And if you're Julio Rodriguez, are you supposed to actually do something about it? Are you supposed to shove him? Or are you supposed to punch him? As a man, let's just talk about it. Like, man card, man code. Like, what are we supposed to do in that situation? Whatever the case, I think Rodriguez was a little bit shocked. He said he was shocked afterward. He, he and by definitely the time looked he, shocked. And by the time he realized what had happened, Nearest was going off to the dugout. Maybe thinking that, okay, if I keep on doing this, I'm going to get ejected. I'm going to get suspended. Honestly, I have no idea what was going on in the two of their heads. All I know is, thank God that happened because, you know, it's a late baseball game on the West Coast and, and Paul was getting tired. That a was, nice little Donnybrook to, to, to wake you up. You know, it's like a nice cup of coffee, a nice little espresso uh, after after a heavy Italian meal, you know? Especially, like, at the end of the sixth inning because that's, like, when you need it the most. That's when you need the, like, oh, I need yeah. to lock back into this. Like, oh, okay, here we go. Uh, yeah, no, I I loved it. I thought it was great. I mean, Hector Nier, I, I think there was, I mean, it's hard to like say for sure there was a cause and effect, but it definitely seemed like it there did was seem a, like it. a yeah. cause and effect of, it, it was kind of what the Astro, the kick in the pants that the Astros uh, needed. More people are talking about what happened in the sixth inning of last night's game. Astros are up 4-3. Hector Nieris takes the mound, faces four batters. Strikes out three, including his friend, Julio Rodriguez, at the very end. He was on fire going into that performance. A .6 ERA over the 15 innings before. And he lost his mind. In a fun way, after mowing down Julio Rodriguez. I don't think I've ever seen a pitcher walk that far down to home plate to rub it in a batter's face that he struck him out. Seriously, I don't think I've ever seen that. Some people are going to call it Bush League. Generally, they would be Mariners fans. Others are going to call it awesome. Mainly, they are going to be Astros fans. And when you think about it, honestly, Astros fans are the only people that are probably going to like that. It was surprising, unexpected. It led to both benches clearing. And it really did feel like Nearest got in the Mariners' head in that moment. But a lot of people are wondering what the hell Hector Nearest said and why this actually happened. So first glance, internet sleuths went back to 2022. There was a moment where Julio Rodriguez hit a two-run homer right after Hector Nearest had hit Mariners batter J.P. France. He made some gestures while rounding the bases that the Astros probably didn't like. Hector Neris, I think, told J-Rod something. I'm not, at this point, I don't know what is and what isn't a Spanish cuss. So he said something to Julio along the way. But these guys, Julio Rodriguez and Hector Neris, are friends or have the same agent, possibly both. These are guys that both 
calm down Framber Valdez when he was having his meltdown against the Mariners a couple of weeks ago. They all have the same agent. They all seemed like they were there together. It didn't seem like there was any bad blood between the three. But this is also a guy in Hector Neris who we know doesn't really care when he's going up against his friends or teammates. He he just wants to win. Remember the World Baseball Classic? He tried to kill Jose Altuve. He just tried to brush him off the plate. It's a World Baseball Classic. I respect that level of competing a guy. I truly do. But this is a guy who clearly does not give a bleep about friendship when there is com- competition going on. Yes. Runs hot. Probably. I, I He should play football. I'll just leave it at that. He should play middle linebacker for something. I would love to see that. True. <laughs> it's, it's that kind of juice that he's bringing to all these baseball games. Right. And it doesn't matter if it's his friend. And look, guy friends do get in fights and we get over it. I think I've told this story before. I'm very thankful that there was no camera phones with good um, cameras back in the day. But one time after me and my buddies all dressed up as these Spice Girls for Halloween, I felt like my friends had ditched me at a frat party and I felt embarrassed. So went back up yelled at them a little bit. One of my friends who was bigger than me came down. And the next thing I know, me and him, while still dressed as the Spice Girls, at least the wigs were off at this moment in time, were rolling down the stairs, just beating the, sh- the absolute bejesus out of each other. Almost cussed, good save. Beating the hell out of each other. And eventually, he won that fight. Like He, he won. He he got me in a, in a spot where he was about to break my, uh, he was about to break my arm. And I was like, damn it. So I, I tapped out. Next day, we had, we had breakfast together. Like, it was fine. I'm sure he felt very proud of himself. I didn't feel that much shame because I was like, well, I mean, he's bigger than me. What am I supposed to do here? I stood I stood my ground. Yeah, normally the guy who wins the fight isn't still upset the next day. Definitely not. No. I wasn't still upset the next day either, yeah. though. Again, I've told you two and four career fight record. That was that was one of the L's. I was wearing a dress while that was happening. So, um, yeah. So, but we got over it. We got over it right afterwards. Do you think that you had gotten mad about your friends ditching you at the party if you weren't dressed like, I don't know, baby no, spice? not at all. I wouldn't have cared. Not at all. Yeah, so it's because you were wearing a dress. You're like, I now I'm just the guy in, the, so in a dress what, at this party. Here's what happened. I got in and they didn't get in. I thought they got in with me. They didn't get in. I got in because apparently I looked like a lady. What a surprise. <laughs> Isn't that hilarious? My sock boobs. I just had, like, I had this one, this long dress, stuffed sock boobs, and, and no one saw the hairy legs because it was like a long, like, knee knee length dress. And my donk, I guess, was popping enough to to pass as a lady. So uh, there you go. College stories. Why didn't they, uh, I get never mind. I was going to ask, why didn't they, like, text you that they didn't get in and you did? But uh, Well, I think this was during a time where texting was not as easy. Oh, uh, well, also because I, I stopped myself not because of that, but that is true. I had a flip. But, I had a flip phone then. Like you had to, you had to press like one one one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's terrible. Uh, no, but you also were wearing a dress, so you didn't have pockets. Uh correct. Yeah, yeah. I guess you could hold it in your sock boob. Yeah, put it in my sock boob. <laughs> anyway, to go back to this, guy friends get mad at each other, but people are mad about what he potentially said, and everyone thinks they know with a certainty, and I'm not sure if anyone really does. Um. Asked what he said to Julio Rodriguez. This is what Hector Neris said. It's like, if it if he hit me, I got you. I just say, I got you. Um, ask a little bit further about it. Here's the audio of Hector Neris. This is part of the game, emotion, like this situation today, agent today. Nothing personal. It's nothing personal. He's only tried to make all my team and, and, and hiss up and try to play hard. So, you, think he, you think he fired up the team at all? Yep. Were you, were, you try, were you trying to do that? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's part of the game. It's part of the moment. So it's part of the game. But others are saying he said something else. Julio Rodriguez was shocked by what Nira said. And per Mariners third baseman Eugenio Suarez, Neris directed a homophobic slur towards Rodriguez on Espanol. Some believe he said, sit down, word that begins with C. I'm not sure if I can say it on the air, truly. I re- I, I'm i really not sure what the FCC Spanish uh, I don't either. rules are. But yes, do do not say the the one that starts with C. He Has said, in it. per lip readers, he said, batea, 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 C word. Vadeahi, which is supposedly Dominican slang 
that essentially is go ahead and hit it, hit it, hit it, mother bleeper, get out of here. And this is where it's tricky because look, as you can tell, I'm very white. I'm not. Someone who knows a lick of Spanish. I took Duolingo. I forgot everything I learned on Duolingo. I had a 60-day streak at one point. It goes to show you it doesn't really help you that much. Maybe I should take Babbel. But anyway, to bring it back. There are so many words that can be interpreted in a variety of different ways in the English language. And when we culturally look at it through our prism, we are going to potentially hate what they said a little bit more than what other people say. And we're going to act differently because of where we're raised and who I guess we're around and what country we're in than other people. And there is a dynamic in Latin culture of homophobia. It's there. This isn't me saying that every single Latin person is homophobic, but with certain cultures, I would say in, in, in other cultures that, again, I'm not a part of, but like I would say uh, among black people that there is a little bit more like pushback against it than there are with like white people. Am I wrong? So again, just my observing here. So when it comes to a word like this, I know that there's a P word in Spanish that I can't say on the word, on, on the air probably either that is interpreted as either bitch in English or homophobic slur in English. And it like varies person to person. And, and this word is in the same way. So th this is going to sound like a devil's advocate defensive Hector Nearest. I truly do not know if that word is offensive or, or not. I think the only people that really do know are Dominican people. Because these are two Dominican guys going back and forth with one another who clearly know each other. So that that's really my take on this whole thing. I, I know it's uh, the Seattle Times, of course, had a like headline that essentially said, like he said, a homophobic slur. Well, it's based off of one person. Is Eugenio Suarez Dominican? Honestly, off the top of my head, I do not know. Um, but people are turning it into that. I legitimately think it was him saying something along the lines of, yeah, I got you, mother bleeper. Could be wrong. Um, Eugenio Suarez is from Venezuela. How does Jose Altuve feel about something like that? I don't know. How, uh, Julio yeah. Rodriguez said he's he was shocked by what he heard. And and we have things in English where from you know, uh, like uh, Australians. Australians are much more comfortable calling each other the c word, the English c and the word English too. Yeah, in English, <laughs> than Americans are calling each other that. Like if you call someone a c word in Australia, they are generally more okay with it than if you call someone here, you get in a fight, basically. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it could, and again, this is two white guys talking about how different we have, Latin no, Americans right. uh, uh, interpret Spanish We're, curse words. But in in my little white brain, that's how that <laughs> makes sense. Is that it? It it's one of those situations. And and look, we're we're naturally going to be a little bit biased towards Hector Neris right now. We are because we liked we liked the visuals. We do not know the audibles. 